Okay, folks, I hope everyone's doing well. I wanted to update everybody on the results of my coronary artery calcium scan. I just got that in the mail today. I had phone confirmation of this a few days ago, and so I was waiting for it to get in the mail so I could present a hard copy for everyone to look at. Um, first, let's have a little quick discussion on what the coronary artery calcium scan is. It is basically a, it's an imaging study using x-rays on a CT, a CAT scan machine, to look at any calcification that occurs in the coronary blood vessels, okay? This test is considered by many to be an excellent tool uh, for predicting uh, future risk for heart disease and also to show heart disease as far as any calcifications that's occurred. Um, it does have limitations. It's not a perfect test. No test is. Um, there are other tests out there that uh, show different things. Other risk factors are out there. Many people, however, do feel that this is possibly one of the best tests out there. There are people that disagree with that, but people like... Uh, Dr. Joel Kahn, who is a prominent vegan cardiologist, uh, he has been quoted as saying that the coronary artery calcium scan is the best tool for predicting future heart disease. That's him. Dr. Kim Williams, another vegan cardiologist who was the former president of the American Cardiology Association, likewise believes that the coronary artery calcium scan is an excellent tool. It gives you excellent predictability for multi-year risk. There's a many, many studies that support that. Now, there are critics of the study. Certainly what it does not show is something called soft plaque. And so what the coronary artery calcium scan shows is calcification, which represents hard established plaque that's been there for, uh, for a period of time. Um, however, the odds of you having soft plaque are significantly lower with no calcification or low levels of calcification. So we still have to respect the predictability of that study. No, no study is perfect, but many people, including these top-level vegans, still believe it is an excellent tool. Even today in 2018, Joel Kahn still says coronary artery calcium scan is an excellent tool. Um, so I've gotten that done. Now let's talk about overall cardiovascular risk because there's other things besides this study that are important. So. Um, for some of you guys may know that I recently participated in a uh, documentary film by a, a, a group in Germany called Galileo, where they did, did some testing. They, they performed some VO2 max testing on me. Uh, VO2 max is also predictive for cardiovascular disease, and so the worse your VO2 max is, the higher your risk for cardiovascular disease. And so when I was tested, and again, remember, I don't do any distance, and this was a, this was a distance rowing thing. Remember, I don't do any of that stuff. I mean, I just eat meat and sprint and lift weights, right? So when tested, my VO2 max tested out in the excellent category, putting me at extremely low risk for cardiovascular disease by that measure. Additionally, uh, when we look at body composition testing, we know on a, on, on, uh, conclusively that things like waist to height ratio uh, play a significant role in predicting future cardiovascular risk. Again, my waist to height ratio is extremely favorable. My waist is typically somewhere between around 36 inches at a height of 77 inches, so six foot five. That puts my waist to height ratio somewhere in the 0.47 range, which is considered pretty much optimal for low risk for cardiovascular disease. Other markers that are out there, we can look at markers of inflammation. Uh, one of the more common tests done is something called a high sensitivity C-reactive protein. As some of you guys remember when I released my labs earlier last year, my high, react, my high sensitivity react, C-reactive protein was 0 0.6, extremely, extremely low. Um, and again, that puts me in an extremely low risk for cardiovascular disease. Now, this is odd because with inflammation, you know, a lot of the vegan folks will say that meat is so inflammatory, and yet my inflammatory markers were incredibly low. And it's not that I eat just a little bit of meat. Now, you got to remember, the average American eats about 58 pounds of red meat per year. I eat quite a bit more than that. So do I eat twice as much? No. Do I eat three times as much? No. Do I eat five times as much? No. Do I eat 10 times as much? No. I eat approximately 25 times as much red meat as other average Americans, okay? Uh, and so, so that I eat probably around 1,200 to 1,500 pounds of meat a year. So that's about two cows worth, right? I eat about two cows worth of meat. I'm a big guy. I work out a lot, about four pounds a day. 
So I eat 25 times the amount of red meat, which is supposed to be inflammatory, and yet my inflammatory markers are almost completely zero. In addition to laboratory studies of inflammation, I have no clinical signs of inflammation with regard to joint pain, digestive issues, or anything else that would be clinically identifiable as inflammatory. So we have to question that. Why would somebody eating 25 times more than normal of something that's supposed to be inflammatory not have inflammation? Very strange, right? Perhaps, perhaps maybe meat's not inflammatory. Um, let's talk about triglycerides, right? Triglycerides or triglyceride HDL index is considered another risk factor for cardiovascular disease. My triglycerides, again, were tested and were shown to only be about 53. 53 is extremely low. My triglyceride to HDL index was slightly over one, which is also considered excellent. Both of those considered are considered extremely low risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Let's talk about diabetes, diabetes and diabetic pathophysiology. As many of you guys know, uh, my blood sugar, fasting blood sugar when tested on one test was 127 and my hemoglobin A1C was 6.3. Those numbers put me in a pre-diabetic range. However, my fasting insulin was 2.6. If you calculate insulin sensitivity based on those numbers using something called an HOMA IR score, you will find that my number is 0 0.8. That is extremely, extremely insulin sensitive. You can also use a triglyceride glucose index score, which would put me at about 8.1 on that scale. That is also considered extremely insulin sensitive. We can look at, again, waist to height ratio as a measure of insulin sensitivity. Again, extremely insulin sensitivity, sensitive. Insulin is probably an insulin sensitivity. It's probably one of the best lab markers we have for predicting cardiovascular disease. It's far, far, far more powerful than HDL or LDL or total cholesterol. In fact, I've recently put up several studies on my Instagram account showing that LDL cholesterol is probably completely worthless, although some people still tend to cling to that. Um, other things, blood pressure. My blood pressure, 110 over 65, completely normal, right? Meat does not cause high blood pressure. Um, what else is there? So let's talk about the coronary artery calcium scan. The study that vegan cardiologist Joel Kahn says is the best predictive measure for cardiovascular risk stratification, right? Despite the limitations, despite the fact that he is well aware that there are potentials for soft plaque that isn't detected, despite that, he still says it's the best test available, correct? So, what is my score? Let's take a look here. Let's see if we can see that. Can you see that number? Maybe backwards for you guys. It says zero. Where's my name? There's my little got a graphic of my perfectly patent arteries. There's my name there. Look at that. Took it the other day. So, I have a zero coronary artery calcium score. Again, one of many things that indicate that I am not at any significant risk for cardiovascular disease. Could have told you guys that without the test, but it's nice to have that, at least to show the disease. It's far more useful than an LDL score. I don't think anyone will dis 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 discount that fact. Um, so, anyway, for you guys who are wondering, coronary artery calcium scan after eating. 25 times the amount of red meat that everyone else does, eating a high-fat diet for at least five years, and eating meat my whole life, and having elevated LDL cholesterol my whole life, zero calcification, and I'm 50, almost 52 years of age. Um, so, that's what we have, guys. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys will share it with folks. Um, you know, more information to come. And uh, you guys enjoy steak. I'm going to celebrate. Take care.